Hi again, it's me, Cinnamon. I'm a 23 year old who loves all things personal finance, especially budgeting. But today I'm going to do something a little different and go into how and why I put my taxes on YNAB. So putting your taxes on budget on YNAB is a bit of a controversial thing to do from what I've seen so far on the YNAB subreddit. And the reason I think this is controversial, like what people have against doing it, is that they feel like by budgeting your taxes and why not you're not really representing your true cash flow because you're budgeting money that you don't really have like money that never hits your account especially if you're a w-2 employee and your taxes are taken out before you get your direct deposit and while i definitely understand the, that sentiment i think it's really important to get the full financial picture and sometimes doing that requires doing some you know, different changes in YNAB that might not really align with tracking exactly just what hits your account because there are some things that never hit your account but do make up your spending. An example of that that can be important is like, you know, you might get gift cards. You might think you don't spend that much on Starbucks, but let's say you've been spending on Starbucks through gift cards. That's something to consider when you really want to plan for your future spending on Starbucks where you might not have that gift card, you know? That's just like an example. Um, something more related to taxes and paycheck deductions more generally is that a lot of people might get different things deducted off their paycheck and not really have a good grasp on how much that thing really costs them because they don't put it on YNAB. Some of those things can include health insurance, like not having the full picture on the cost of your health insurance. Another example would be car insurance some people get their car insurance taken out from their paycheck so those things are still things you're paying for even though they aren't taken directly out of your account they're actually taken out from your pay stub and i think just having that full picture in YNAB is super beneficial one thing i find that's interesting is that there's a huge division in how like regular employees think about taxes versus businesses Businesses 100% look at taxes as an, an expense, like any other expense, and they even hired people to figure out how to decrease that expense, how much they pay in taxes, and they consider that, you know, increasing the profit of the business. Beyond, like, businesses, I notice that a lot of high-income earners also tend to have that mentality of thinking of taxes as, a, as an expense, and I think the reason why is that as a high-income earner, taxes become a larger percentage of your income so you can't really make mistakes when thinking about things versus a gross or net perspective because then you start to have really really big rounding errors something to back this up is i was looking at this subreddit called henry finance um, and you can see henry starts stands for high earner not yet rich and people have been posting these charts, these Gantt charts showing their spending for the year. And in all of them, I've noticed that they've accounted for taxes. So you see here, they're showing taxes, like that's part of their spending. Again, we're seeing someone accounting for taxes. Like how does that get broken down? Taxes again, and someone asking how to make the charts. So yeah, I think, you know, Thinking about taxes strategically doesn't have to be just limited to businesses or high income earners at all levels. It is really helpful to you to get for you to get a pulse on how much you're spending on taxes. And even though that might not be something you can immediately change the same way you can't immediately change your rent, it's still good to know how much that is costing you because year over year, you might be able to make meaningful changes regarding that, whether that's changing some of your deductions, your retirement contributions, maybe moving states. Maybe it's just doing nothing and just knowing the number. I think that's really the most powerful thing, just knowing the number. So yeah, I hopefully have a been able to make my case for why it is good to do this on YNAB, and now I will take you into how I actually do it on YNAB. So yeah, how I do it on YNAB is that when I get my checking account actually connected, like linked so i get the my direct deposit like inflow automatically and when i get that inflow i go into my works 
portal and I check my actual pay stub breakdown and I create two transactions. So one is an inflow for my pay because you can only do like one inflow total and one outflow total. You can't do inflow and outflows mixed when you split. So I, that's why I have to create two transactions. One is for all the inflows and that is for all the like ways I got paid. Right now I'm getting a paycheck, my base salary, and my bonus paid out. So that goes here. And then I create an outflow transaction for my deductions. And you can see I'm capturing all different kinds of deductions here. I'm capturing my taxes, I'm capturing my health insurance, and I'm capturing my retirement contributions. So this has really a lot of benefits because you can start tracking these totals on MyNav instead of having to use a separate spreadsheet to make sure you're on target with all of these things. Hi, I'm adding this in during editing, so apologies if the audio sounds really different, but I also wanted to add that this is really important to look at your pay stubs because last year, I was, or in 2022, I was able to catch that I was being taxed by my former state and my current state because my address hadn't updated in the work portal yet, and because I was able to catch that, I was able to fix something on my W-2 that resulted in a pretty big tax refund for me of $2,000, so yeah. So yeah, I just look at it and make sure all of the numbers are matching what I'm seeing on the website. And then I look here and I click both of the transactions and I make sure this total is actually matching that first transaction that I actually got to hit my account. So yes, there is a little bit of like magic happening. I think honestly, what would be better for you to do is have a unlinked account where you do all this magic and then have just a single transfer go into your actual checking account where you get the direct deposit to make sure that your checking account statements look as closely to what you're seeing in your YNAB account as possible. I guess, yeah, if I were to redo it, I would set it up that way just so like I don't have to know all the like movie magic I'm doing behind the scenes on YNAB. And it adds like a layer of abstraction. So yeah, it's not too much work, but you know, these numbers can change semi-frequently, like my first paycheck has slightly different numbers than my second paycheck, and they tend to just repeat in that order. So, you know, I think it's totally worth it, but this is just showing you how simple it can be to actually set this up. So, having set it up, I'll use my um, 401k as an example. I add the target numbers that I want, and then just use YNAB to track, and then I know okay, maybe I actually need to invest more with my 401k to max it out. Maybe I can invest less to max it out based on what I'm seeing in YNAB. So like you can see from YNAB, with a paycheck, I only put $873 in. And with the next one, I have to put $1,000 in. So I'm not going to do that with the next one. So I know right now I'm actually underfunding my 401k. I'm not on track to max it out. And I'm doing that on purpose because I know once I get my raise through my promotion, I will actually then be contributing way more and be on track. So I'm fine being behind by now, for now. But, you know, with my app, I at least know how behind I am. And then I can, like, I don't know, reevaluate. So right now my taxes are TBA because I haven't put in my tax estimates on YMAP yet. And I'm going to show you how I get my yearly tax estimates. So if you watch my channel, you'll know that I have already gotten my yearly tax estimates. Um, I think some people have questions from seeing my yearly budget goals on how I did this. So I did already do this in my yearly budget goals. I just didn't move them to YNAB because I want to wait until I actually get my like definitive promotion package so I know what my gross income will be. So I don't have to redo all the YNAB setup. It's not too much work, but I'm just like, you know. Why not just calculate it once and really know the number when the time comes? So that's why I've held off putting it on YNAB, but I will show how I was able to get these numbers that I use for my annual plan. So for starters, I will start with my favorite tool, which is the Federal Income Tax Calculator from Smart Asset. The reason why this is my favorite tool is because it is like the fastest, easiest one to use. So actually, let's go back and let me copy and paste this number. And it's really fast. So you just put in your household income, your location. Your location does matter because some locations have like specific taxes. Um, and then your filing status. What I don't like is that here you can see 
it doesn't have house, head of household. So that's a con. And you can put in your 401k contribution. You can put in your IRA contribution. It doesn't have a spot for HSA contribution, which is another con. And you can see that it's another con of it is that it's using 2023 estimates still. So it hasn't updated the calculator to use 2024 brackets and limits. So that is another con of this. But I think this is really good to get back of the envelope numbers. And the reason why using 2023 estimates isn't so bad is because usually the brackets, like they, the ceilings for each bracket go up every year. So if you made $100,000 in 2023, you'll have you'll pay more in taxes than if you made $100,000 in 2024. So it's only going to give you an upper bound on what you'll pay in taxes. So you don't have to be worried um, that you'll be underpaying taxes. So I'll allow it for now. And you can see it gives you just a really simple one-page breakdown and it works on an annual basis. And I like to do things annually. So you can see how it's saying I'll pay $29,000 federal, $12,000 in FICA, $12,000 in state, zero and local and it shows me my income like after taxes like and then it shows me what it would be with my retirement contributions gone so you really get a good picture here and you even get like your percentages here as well which i really like one thing so you can see that this doesn't match exactly my number so i didn't use this for my tax planning for 2024 because it doesn't use 2024 numbers, but it is pretty close to what I did get with the more specific tool I used. And you can see that all here. I think one pro this has over the specific tool I use is that it actually does account for the cap in social security tax, which the more specific tool I use that I'm gonna flash to now, ADP salary paycheck calculator doesn't account for the tax the cap in social security tax, which is part of FICA. So I love ADP. Like this is my favorite if you're actually someone who like is into this tax stuff because it will give you the most specific numbers. And it is the tool that many employers, including my own, actually use for payroll. So like it is very, very, very close. And so you can see immediately like it's getting way more specific than that other tool we we're using. So I ask you how much you're paid. Let's use the same numbers. You can add in overtime, pay date. So it knows we're talking about 2024. It's using 2024 numbers. Then you can go over, put in specific information. Head of household is supported. So much information just broken down here. All of these things, like lots of questions. Then we get on the state level. It gets state specific information, even though this tool asks for my location, it does use it, but it doesn't get all state specific information. Like it gives me the amount I pay in state taxes, but it doesn't account for the fact that my state has SDI, state disability insurance. But you can see here, this does account and it knows that my state has SDI. And I, for example, if I lived in New York, it would ask for my exact address in New York because it wants to check if I live in New York City or you have to pay a local New York City tax. So it really, really knows like all of the scenarios you can be in. So all of this is true for me. You can also put in your benefits, right? So like it will let you put in your medical, your dental, your vision. HSA, which the last one didn't let me put in, and you have to put that number in as the per paycheck number. Similarly, with your 401k, you can put in a per paycheck number. I think one was like that. And you can see exactly how my paycheck was laid out in YNAB. It's giving me that exact breakdown. It is so detailed. Again, the only con with this is that it does not cap social security tax because it does not know that social security tax, like it's only looking at a singular paycheck rather than in an annual view. So that is a con. Similarly, 
state disability insurance has a cap. It doesn't do that, but in 2024, it doesn't have a cap anyway, so whatever. It's all good. Okay. This tool, I absolutely love it, and it is actually the one I use for my numbers. And I just took the numbers it gave me and multiplied it by 26 since I get paid biweekly. And so my tax numbers here are actually overestimates because I do need to account for the Social Security cap. And SCI cap is gone anyway, so I'm good. So yeah, that is just showing. I took those numbers and multiplied by them, them by 26 for pretty much everything. So I love ADP, super detailed. You can use it if you like to budget by paycheck, and you can also use it for the annual view a little bit. And finally, you know, if you're still like, eh, are these tools going to be really that good? There are government official tools to help you do this. So this is the IRS. It only does your federal taxes, but you can use this to see if like, mm -hmm, how true are these tools really? If you're doubting that, you can use the IRS site. So I'm going to put the same numbers in the IRS site and see where we land up. Oh, I should put yes here. And this is like so, so detailed, right? Because this is pretty much the questions you get asked when you do your tax return. And the only tip I have here is that when they ask how much you get paid per pay period, I just put zero because I like to, oops, I'm like not actually reading the questions. I'm just going based off like what I know about how it does when I ask you how much you get paid per pay period, I just put zero and then I just enter my annual numbers because I don't care about the per pay period. I'm a like yearly budgeter. So yes, that looks right over here. Federal taxes per pay period put zero and year to date put zero because you want to get the whole amount of what you will owe for the year rather than what you still owe for the year, right? But if you are curious about what you still owe for the year, like answer all of these questions, you know, fully honestly. Contribute to a 401k, amount per pay period zero, the year to date, the max, and it lets me put the max. No questions asked. Zero, year to date, three, eight, five, zero. And I really like this because I can really put in my annual numbers. Is this what it would be annually? I think it's 3860. You do, you can put in so much of more information. None of the above for me. Again, all really detailed information. Adjustments to income, like this really primes you to start thinking about all the ways you can tax optimize student loan interest deduction educator expense deduction like you get familiar with all the ways you could tax optimize as like a w-2 employee through this process so it's very educational standard deduction again credits it is very educational very specific to you like you will get a really good idea of what you will truly owe in taxes using this government official tool and i'm missing questions now it is loading, guys, and look at what it says, 28,554. Oh, oh my God. Okay, I actually do want to participate. Let's see. Okay. Okay, I'm going to quickly submit this. Okay, I'll give them five stars. I think I have actually looked at this. Okay. Wow, they're asking me to survey them. I'm a fan. Just like I told you guys, I gave them five stars. Okay, and let's quickly look at how this compares to other tools. And you can see, oops, wrong one. You can see I got a pretty similar estimate when I multiplied ADP by 26. ADP is actually a little over, which I prefer because then I'm never like planning to um oh, right? If I hit the ADP numbers. So this is pretty much my process and what I would do, like if I was actually going to commit to these numbers, I would put, let's say ADP's number roughly. I put it as a needed for spending target custom due by the end of the year. And, oops, 
then I could track, oh, the number didn't come out right. Okay, but yeah, once I get my estimates, I would just transfer them over into YNAB and then I will be able to see like, hmm, am I gonna maybe end up under withholding for the year? And you can see that I put in $1,875 with my first paycheck and I'm getting another one that is less than what I need for the month to be on track. So I'm gonna start off the year a little behind, but I'll actually catch up because January is a three paycheck month for me. So I'll actually start up the year a little ahead once I get my three paychecks. And then I'll know like, hmm, am I lagging behind? Am I lagging ahead? And especially near the end of the year, if you watch my like last few budgeting videos, you'll see that I was lagging behind like $500. So I expect to owe about $500 this year. We'll see how it all, you know, comes out to be. But yeah, I find going through the task process really helpful. And having it in YNAB and just really putting my whole financial picture on this platform, it is possible to do. You don't want to have too many tools like you're using to balance things out. The one thing you really can't do with YNAB is forecasting. So that is why I do my annual planning on a separate sheet. But aside from that, I can pretty much answer any financial questions I have through my budget, which I love. So thank you for listening to this and I hope you found this video helpful. Bye!